Hello everyone. Here we continue talking about hypothesis testing. We have explained the idea and the logic about hypothesis testing in the lecture earlier. Here we are going to apply them to the real problems in different situations. As we have known, there are three different hypothesis models: two-tailed hypothesis testing or one-tailed hypothesis. Hypothesis testing, right-sided or left-sided. For testing a population mean, if we know the population standard deviation sigma, we will do the testing based on the sampling distribution. That is, for a random sample with size n, the sample mean x bar follows normal distribution with mean mu same as population mean and the standard deviation. Sigma divided by square root n. It can be denoted as this. Capital N represents normal distribution, and then we give two parameters: mu and standard deviation. Let's look at few examples. We have a quick review the example we did before. This is a two-sided hypothesis testing. We test population mean. Is 16 or not 16? So the method we used, we can calculate the test statistic, give us number 3.32, and we can find critical value from significance level, give us 1.645, and we compare these two values. Since 3.32 is bigger than 1.645, so we reject. Now hypothesis. So we do not believe the population mean is 16 ounces, or we can use different approach. We calculate the p-value based on the test statistic. So 3.32, since the model is symmetrical, so we have another part negative 3.32. This identified the center area. So outside the center area, how much chance for any sample, the sample mean, or we say standardized sample mean, would fall in this two-tailed green area? That probability is p-value. So we calculate the p-value. This can easily be done in Excel. We do give you the Excel function. That's how you get the number. The p-value 0.001, so give us understanding smaller than significance level, so we also get reject now hypothesis, or we can directly use original data value compared to the cutoff value. So that's what we say. You see that how far being considered as far enough to reject. We set up that border, which is 16.1 and 15.9. So, if our sample data shows as outside this range, that means far enough. Here, let's look at another example. A home building company wishes to test to determine whether the mean time to frame and roof a new home is more than 25 days. If we assume we know the standard deviation to be three days, so we use ten percent as significance level, and we pick up a random sample with size sixty-four. That means sixty-four homes being selected, and then we found average time twenty-six days from this sample. See how. We can come out conclusion. So we set up the hypothesis model. So the now hypothesis, twenty-five days, and we test alternative hypothesis, bigger than twenty-five days. That's what we want to see if we can claim that. So obviously this is one-tailed test, and we calculate the test statistic. Turn out this is standardized sample mean. Give us 2.67, and we mark this significance 
level, ten percent. So one side, we only look at the right side. So this is significant level being marked the green area, which is the right side the little tail. We find the critical value. Based on this little tail, we got this cutoff line 1.28. This one can be easily done from Excel. Here's the Excel function give you this critical value. 0.9 being applied. Excel function required cumulative probability. All the left side, so that is 90% or 0.9. That's where 0.9 apply. Since we have test statistic 2.67, which is greater than 1.28, so we reject H0. No hypothesis. That means we do not consider the average. Time as 25 days for Freeman the roof a new home. For this same question, we can have different approach. We calculate p value. So that means based on the test statistic 2.67, we calculate how much chance the standardized sample mean is bigger than 2.67. So here we mark 2.67. We actually cal calculate the area, how big the area on the right side, the little tail, the green area. So give us the answer 0 0.0038. That's what we call the p-value. It can be done, can be found from Excel easily. That's where you put it in. That's your test stick, or we say the cutoff, 2.67. So from there, we calculate the right side. Again, Excel function give us always cumulative, which is the left side. So that's why we use 1 minus this. And uh, another parameter, 1, give you answer yes for cumulative. That's a yes or no option. So based on that, we come out p-value is smaller than our significance level, 10%. P-value is like 0 0.38, oh, 3, uh, right, 0.38%. It's much smaller. So we can say we have overwhelming evidence to reject H0. Now hypothesis. Here's another example. Most time we do not know the population standard deviation sigma. However, if we take a sample from a population, we can always know the sample standard deviation. So this is a different approach we can always apply. We do not need population standard deviation. We just have different sampling distribution. For random sample with size n, the standardized sample mean follows student distribution. This standard sample mean comes from by using sample standard deviation. Here it is. So x bar minus mu, which is population mean, and we divide by s over square root n. So here s is Stand, uh, standard deviation of the sample. We can always have this information. And here we do have another parameter which is degree of freedom, n minus 1, sample size minus 1. So the t density curve is pretty much like bell shaped normal curve. You can see that. Here we give you a few examples. You see the curve. We have degree freedom 1, degree freedom 2, degree freedom 5, and a degree freedom which is infinite. Here is the, so here is another example. A pharmaceutical company has produced a new drug to treat COVID-19 patients. The company believes that the drug will improve the breathing situation in less than 15 minutes. 200 patients have tried this new drug. The mean time 
of improving the breathing situation was observed as 14.7 minutes, and the standard deviation was 3.6 minutes. If we use significance level 5%, should we believe the company's claim? So we set up this hypothesis model. Now hypothesis is 15 minutes, and alternative hypothesis is less than 15 minutes. So this obviously is one tail of the test. This is from the question background. And we calculate test statistic, which is standardized sample mean by using sample standard deviation. So give us negative 1.1785 with significance level 5%. So we are testing the left side. So we look at the left side a little tail. This significance level give us the critical value, negative 1.65. So this critical value can be found in Excel very conveniently. And here, we have 5% in this function. That's the little tail, green area. That's our significance level. And we have 199. That's from the degree of freedom. Sample size minus 1 give us this number. Only these two parameters needed for this Excel function directly give us the critical value. That means where you set up this green area. Test the statistic negative 1.18 is greater than critical value negative 1.65. So we cannot reject now hypothesis. Only when the test statistic is far enough from the center, we will be able to reject. But now we set up the border, which is negative 1.65. But the test statistic, statistic negative 1.18, is not further than this critical value. So we cannot reject H0. We can have different approach calculate p-value. After we got this test statistic, negative 1.1785, and we calculate how much chance the variable t would be smaller than this number. So give us the answer, 0.12. This can also come from Excel function. We can easily find out. Here again, we have this negative 1.1785. That is from the test statistic. And we have the degree of freedom from the sample size minus 1. And the last parameter 1 means cumulative. So we are calculating cumulative probability until this number test the statistic. So which is the green area, give us the p-value. So turn out the p-value, 12%. That is fairly big. And our significance value, value only 5%. Since p-value 0.12 is bigger than 0.05, obviously, so we do not have enough evidence to say this new drug, the time for improving the breathing situation would be shorter or less than 15 minutes. We cannot agree with this claim. Sometimes we are interested in the proportion of certain group in the population. We may need to test some statement about the proportion of the specific group in the population. A random sample is taken from the population and we get the information about the proportion of this specific group in this sample. 
So we are going to make decision based on this information. Here is the related sampling distribution that we rely on. The statement is assuming P as the proportion of the specific group in the population. For a random sample with size n, we observed x members from the specific group. So, the proportion of this specific group in the sample is denoted as x over n. Obviously, that is the percentage. This kind of proportion comes from the sample. And then we want to use this sample proportion. Okay. So we need to understand what kind of distribution this uh, sample proportion may be. So here it is. The sample proportion follows normal distribution with the same proportion as mean as population proportion. And the standard deviation which is square root p multiplied 1 minus p divided by n. Or we can say the standardized the sample proportion follows standard normal distribution. So we can use z as our test statistic. Here's an example. A company claims that the proportion of dissatisfied customers is less than 10%. To test this claim, a random sample of 100 customers were selected and 6 of them were found dissatisfied. Using 5% significance level, can we agree with this claim? Let's look at the model. So our null hypothesis would be the dissatisfied customer is 10%. And our alternative hypothesis is the dissatisfied customers, the proportion would be less than 10%. We want to decide which one we would believe. So this is a one-tailed test again. So we calculate the proportion from the sample is obvious 6%. And then we calculate the, the test statistic give us negative 1.33. And then we get our critical value from Excel function give us negative 1.645. This critical value based on the little tail 5% which is our significance level. So we compare negative 1.33 is bigger than negative 1.645. So this is not far enough from the center. In that case, we cannot reject H0. That means we cannot say the dissatisfied customer is less than 10%. We do not agree with this statement or this claim. For this example, we have another approach. If we use the p-value, calculate the probability for the random variable z less than negative 1.33, give us the answer p-value 0.0918 and our significance level 0.05 so here shows how you get this p-value based on excel function you put in the cell you get it right away since 0.0918 is bigger than 0.05 so turn out we do not have enough evidence to reject null hypothesis. That means we do not have enough evidence to reject the dissatisfied customer is 10%. If we cannot reject that statement, that means we cannot agree with the dissatisfied customer is less than 10%. Okay, think about the logic carefully. See you next time.